Hello, I'm back. It's been a while, sorry, hi. Um, today we're going to talk about when strength can be more like a weakness and when weakness can be more like a strength. So that's the topic for today. And I came to this topic very naturally through events in my own life. The coronavirus pandemic has become even more real for me than it was. Um, as I'm sure most of you know, my beloved hometown of New Orleans has been particularly uh, hard hit by COVID-19. And more recently, within the last week, my family was hit with it. Um, my father was hospitalized on Sunday with a pulse oxygenation of 70% and he uh, had sudden weakness and shortness of breath. Two negative COVID tests later, uh, they still think he has COVID because the scans of his lungs show the crystalline structures that are consistent with COVID. So. They are treating it like COVID. They're telling us it's COVID. They're keeping him in the hospital until he's not contagious anymore. So, Vivian and I hopped on a plane and came to New Orleans. And I am someone who, I will admit, enjoys the role of uh, <laughs> the knight on a silver steed or the knight knightess on a silver steed. Um, that is, you know, being a strong person who's really good in a crisis, that has been a persona that I have, I have cultivated for myself. I will hold my hand up and admit there's some ego there. And that can be dangerous because when you think of yourself as a helper, when you think of yourself as a carer, when you, and, and when you are, it's not to say that I'm not, um, and you think of yourself as someone who's really strong and I've got this and I can do this and there's nothing that's going to get me down and I can always push through and make it that can become a weakness because in a crisis or anytime you might just hit a wall and you might need some help and not only is that okay it's good and it's a sign of strength now I will not say I will freely admit that I did not necessarily come to this realization entirely on my own I was in the throes of getting everything that I could done and doing everything that I could and trying to be the strong person who was keeping the cool head in the crisis. And I hit a wall. And a friend of mine, who is also a, a, an earthly guide, let's say, she reminded me that I can't do it all. And I can't do it by myself. And that I need to ask for help. And that actually, that as strong as I am, I still need to be strong enough to admit when I need some help. And that is incredibly important, I think, right now. Um, and I don't think you have to have a family member in the hospital or to be in massive financial crisis to be in that, be in that place. You know, there's so much going on and there's so much that's stressful about this and everybody's experiencing it in their own unique way, but everybody's gonna hit a wall and we may all hit several walls. And I hit a wall this week and I did need to reach out to someone who cared about me and ask for support and say, you know, I really need you right now. And that was a really great thing. And I was reminded that allowing someone else to help us is also a gift, right? That if you don't ever ask for help, you're not allowing anyone else to take that role of being the helper or the carer. And that's a great joy. I know I get great joy out of it, so why should I be selfish and keep other people from getting a chance to do that, right? I need to offer that to other people. If you, and I think that's a particularly, for me, that, that helps me um, ask for help, right? Because instead of thinking of myself as being weak, I'm thinking of myself as offering the opportunity for someone else to help me. And I don't mean that, and that sounds a little bit narcissistic, but I think it's very real. Um, and that when we allow ourselves to sit back and say, you know what, I do need help, I can't do this all, that can be one of the hardest things to do. 
And I think it's really important that we allow ourselves to do that now, that we reach out to our friends and family, and we do on several levels. We reach out as helpers to ask to check in to make sure people are okay, but then we also uh, reach out and say, I'm struggling, I need help, I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad week, I need help. And that can be a great form of strength because it takes a very strong person or someone who's really, really down to ask for help, right? So you don't want to get to that point where you're really, really down. You want to ask for help before you hit that level because you don't need to go that far down, right? And then, and then a lot of times then we end up feeling guilty about it, right? And it's not weakness. There's no reason to feel guilty. We all need help sometimes. And the sooner that we admit that we're not perfect and that we can't do it all um, and that we're not superhuman, the, the healthier we will be, right? And so this is a pattern that I'm obviously familiar with and trying to work my own self out of. And um, so I'm not preaching. This is, this, is, this is all about, you know, it's all about me and what I learned. And I'm offering it to you because I think at this time, there's so much and we're all trying to be strong in one way or another. And we're probably gonna reach several breaking points. And we may reach a daily breaking point or a weekly breaking point, and that's okay, you know, that's okay. Be kind to yourself and then ask for help, right? Remind yourself that it's okay to ask for help. And it's not only just okay to ask for help, it's good to ask for help. And you're doing something good for somebody else by allowing them to help you. Because I'm sure if you've ever reached out to someone else, and I'm sure all of you have, and helped them, think about how, you know, I know that when I'm talking to someone else about what's going on with them and what their problems are, I forget. I stop focusing on all of my junk, right? I, I can leave my junk aside for a little while, while I focus on what's going on with them and thinking of thinking through things with them and talking through things or just listening. Sometimes people don't want you to offer an answer and sometimes there is no answer. Sometimes you just need to be there to be an ear. You can't really be a shoulder right now during social distancing, but you can be an ear. And that's what I needed the other day. I needed an ear. And that was, it was, it was, it was fabulous because that helped the whole storm pass that much faster, right? So there's really not much more to say about that. Don't try to be so strong that you become weak and don't think of asking for help as weakness because it's actually a real form of strength and it is part of what binds our community together that when some of us are when some of us are struggling, others of us are blowing and going and when some of us um, are blowing and going, we're helping other people. So, you know, it we need to allow this sort of back and forth to happen because that helps bring all of us up, right, in the end because we can support other people when they're having a tough time and we can get supported when we're having a tough time. So I know it sounds really simple, but I know it's hard because it's hard for me. So if it's hard for anybody else out there, maybe that'll be helpful. Anyway, I wish you the best. Um, Oh, I think I didn't say. My dad's actually doing pretty well. He's still in the hospital, but he's doing pretty well. So, fingers crossed. Um, and, um, you know, all I can say is we don't know when, but this too shall pass. And just keep, keep plugging forward. That's all we can do, moment to moment. Moment to moment. Don't try to project out in the future. Just deal with what you got today. And in fact, right now, I think I'm going to go outside and watch a thunderstorm because that sounds like a really good thing to do right now. Anyway, take care guys. Love ya. Mwah.